In 1800, the United States started to transform into a global power. President Thomas Jefferson doubled the size of the country when he purchased the Louisiana Territory in 1803. The U.S. suddenly had the vast middle of North America to conquer. There was only one issue. Jefferson didn't know exactly what he bought. He needed someone to explore the area, and the Lewis and Clark expedition was born. Meriwether Lewis and William Clark led 55 other people in the Corps of Discovery from St. Louis to the Pacific Ocean, engaging with Native American tribes and wildlife along the way. They used the Missouri River as a highway from St. Louis to Montana, and millions of other Americans followed suit. Steamships, settlement, and flood control efforts reshaped the river during the 19th and 20th centuries, and it all started with Lewis and Clark. They wrote extensively about the fish and wildlife along the Missouri. In June 1804, Joseph Whitehouse described the banks of the Platte River where it meets the Missouri as follows, quote, We perceived the deer in abundance on the land beaches, as passed along, likewise bears and wolves, an abundance of wild fowl." Unquote. The expedition took advantage of the wildlife and killed 14 bears that month. Today, that location is farmland on the outskirts of Kansas City. In one entry from August that year, Clark wrote that he took 10 men fishing in a creek around present-day Omaha, Nebraska, and they caught 308 fish. The list of fish included, quote, pike, salmon, bass, perch, red horse, small cat, and Ohio silverfish, unquote. Some of these names don't reflect the actual fish species found in the river. Salmon, for example, have never lived in the Missouri. Scholars' best guess is that Clark referred to brook trout or moon eye as salmon. The red horse was likely a shorthead red horse sucker, and the silverfish was probably a freshwater drum. In September, the expedition killed 16 bison, 4 elk, 29 deer, 1 wolf, and 4 turkeys along the Missouri River in present-day Charles Mix County, South Dakota. On September 9th, Clark described the bison herd as follows, quote, I saw at one view near the river at least 400 buffalo. Those animals have been in view all day feeding on the plains." Unquote. He also noted that every section of timber had elk or deer. A bit further upstream on September 16th, Lewis wrote that their camp was surrounded by vast herds of bison, deer, elk, and pronghorn. He described the scene saying that the animals were, quote, seen feeding in every direction as far as the eye of the observer could reach, unquote. If you're wondering what they did with all this meat, they turned a lot of it into jerky. After Lewis and Clark opened America's eyes to the west, people began streaming up the Missouri. Steamboats paddled their way upriver with U.S. expansion on board. The steamboat era was the first major change on the Missouri. Cities like Kansas City, Omaha, and Bismarck were established on the banks of the Missouri between 1850 and 1875. They quickly grew as people moved west. The natural resources along the Missouri, like fur, timber, and later gold in Montana, made the river popular. The major cities along its banks would change the river forever. Before I discuss those changes, we need to talk about the river itself. The Missouri River Basin covers 500,000 square miles in eight states, from Missouri to the eastern edge of the Rocky Mountains in Montana. It is a wide, sinuous river that looks like a series of S-curves on a map. Rivers like that shift over time as one bank erodes and a new one forms. The sediment left by the movement and flooding makes soil along sinuous rivers very rich. Historically, the Missouri supported strong, healthy habitat on shore as well as underwater. Early settlers called it the Big Muddy because of the sediment draining from the plains. There were smaller projects before, but President Franklin Roosevelt approved the first of six federal dams on the river at Fort Peck, Montana in 1933. By 1963, the last one, 
Big Bend Dam in South Dakota was closed. All are still active today. The dams store water for flood control, drinking, and irrigation. In the southern parts of the Missouri, the main flood control infrastructure are levees. They serve two main purposes. The levees protect property along the river and they help narrow the river channel for shipping barges. The dams and levees channelized the Missouri and forced water to flow faster and dig out the bottom of the river instead of the banks. Over time, those structures straightened the river. The river that we see today is tamed to some extent by these structures. They have made life along its banks easier for humans, but they have also severely damaged the river's ecosystem. According to the Missouri Department of Natural Resources, dams and other structures destroyed a lot of the river's environment. As the river channelized, paddlefish, pallid sturgeon, and other fishes lost the habitat they need. Paddlefish, for example, need slower water in side channels and gravel beds to spawn. Pallid sturgeon live on the bottom and need current and sandy substrate. The river flows plenty fast, but the channelization scoured the bottom of the river, removing some of that substrate. These changes, along with others, resulted in a sharp decline for both species. Today, a robust hatchery system raises paddlefish and pallid sturgeon for release into the river. Efforts to re-establish wild populations of both species in the Missouri are ongoing, but their recovery is a story for another video. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe.